Hi, I'm Jerry, and this is a 1,000 word-ish guide to the Etrich Tauber, the world's first bomber. The Etrich Tauber was designed by the Austrian Ignaz Ego Etrich in 1909 and first saw flight in 1910, piloted by Etrich himself. Unfortunately, an early crash in the aircraft nearly broke his back, and subsequent testing was performed by his associate, Karl Illner. When looking at the Tauber, the most distinctive features are the wings and tailplane, which seem modelled after a bird's wing. Even the name itself means dove in German. However, the wings were actually inspired by the Alsometra macrocarpra, a Javan cucumber whose seeds can glide a very significant distance from the parent plant. These seeds move like a butterfly in flight, exhibiting what is known as fugoid oscillation, that is gaining height, stalling, then dipping and accelerating to gain lift. They are also stable in pitch and roll, so it is easy to see how an aircraft designer might be inspired by them. Control was achieved through the warping of the wings and the stabilizer. Only the twin vertical rudders were hinged in what we would consider today to be a conventional style. Wing warping was used extensively in the design of early aircraft, especially monoplanes, inspired by the work of Otto Lilienthal, the Wright brothers, and prior art dating back decades. Prior art, incidentally, refers to information publicly available before an inventor's claim to originality, and in principle should invalidate a patent filed by the inventor. So in principle, the Wright brothers should never have been granted their patent for wing warping because they didn't invent it. I'm really going to have to do a video on that subject at some point as it keeps coming up. According to the November 11th, 1911 issue of Flight Magazine, construction of the Tauber's fish-shaped fuselage consisted of steel tubing with wire cross-bracing, somewhat reminiscent of Robert Esno Pelterie's REP monoplane that saw flight in 1908. Metal sheeting covered the front to protect from air disturbance with the rear behind the cockpit using fabric. Fabric also covered the wings. The Tauber's undercarriage was borrowed directly from the Blériot Type 11 and used the same tail dragger style with three castering wheels in shock absorbing mounts, two forward and one aft. This was an arrangement that had proven to make landing in a crosswind much less risky. Power to a single two bladed propeller was provided by a Mercedes Type E4F four cylinder water cooled piston engine developing 86 horsepower. This pushed the aircraft to a maximum speed of 62 miles per hour with a range of 87 miles and a service ceiling of 6,500 feet. If you have seen my Blériot 11 video, you might notice that aircraft design was advancing rapidly. The Tauber proved to be remarkably stable in flight, probably too stable, as it was difficult to turn and slow in the process. The stability, however, would suit it well later as a reconnaissance aircraft and as a light bomber. Demonstrating its capabilities, a two-man version of the aircraft was used to capture the Munich Berlin Kathreiner Prize. On 8th December 1911, Gino Linnekergel and Suvalik Johannisthal achieved a two-man endurance record for flying a Tauber four hours and 35 minutes over Germany. The aircraft went on to be licensed for production by, among others, Edmund Rompler, who claimed credit for the design and stopped paying fees to Ego Etrich. In fact, the plane is often called the Rompler Tauber. To cut a long story short, Etrich abandoned his patent with the onset of World War I and made the design public domain. As a result, many others commenced manufacture. It thus became the first military aircraft to be made in quantity by the Germans. A plethora of variants followed from an estimated 14 different manufacturers. As I mentioned in my Blerio 11 video, in 1911 Italy was at war with the Ottoman Empire and had shipped its entire aviation division to the North African desert under the command of Capitano Carlo Maria Piazza. This was the first time aviation was used in the promulgation of a war and progress was followed closely by the rest of the world, with the information gained going on to fuel the use of air power in World War I. Now follows the incident that qualifies the Tauber as the world's first bomber aircraft. On November 1st, 1911, Sotto Tenente, 2nd Lieutenant in English, 
Giulio Gavotti carried aloft four grenades, each weighing about one and a half kilos by his own account. Reaching the Tagira Oasis, he pulled the security tags and tossed three of the munitions over the side, being careful not to hit the wings. He then proceeded to the Turkish military camp at Ain Zara, where he repeated the process with his final grenade. I have no doubt that the stability of the Tauber greatly assisted this endeavour. Before his mission, Gavotti had written to his father, saying, Today I have decided to try to throw bombs from the aeroplane. It is the first time that we will try this, and if I succeed, I will be really pleased to be the first person to do it. He was quite enthusiastic about his mission, stating afterwards that I come back really pleased with the result. I go straight to report to General Caneva. Everyone is satisfied. Gavotti reported that the first of his grenades hit the center of the encampment and exploded, but that the next two had had less success. I have found no record of the effects of his final grenade. It is generally believed that no casualties were caused, but the Ottomans were quick to claim that the Italians had violated Article 4, Subsection 1 of the 1899 Hague Convention. They also claimed that Sottotenente Gavotti had bombed a field hospital. The Italians correctly, but somewhat in violation of the spirit of the article in question, pointed out that it was in reference to balloons, not heavier-than-air vehicles. The wording states that the contracting powers agree to prohibit for a term of five years the launching of projectiles and explosives from balloons or by any other new methods of a similar nature. They also investigated the claim that Gavotti had bombed a field hospital and needless to say determined that no such incident had occurred. The Italian press reported his exploits with great delight. Others rather hypocritically condemned them. I'm not entirely sure why the use of artillery was acceptable, but a few grenades were not. Apparently it was considered, um, ungentlemanly. The rest of the world took notice, and the results were the repeated violation of multiple conventions as and when military necessity took priority. During World War I, the Etrich Tauber saw much use, as the Blériot 11 had, performing reconnaissance and light bombing duties. However, also like the Blériot, it became very apparent that it was obsolete, and after only six months was withdrawn from frontline service, remaining in use as a trainer until the end of the war. Many future German aces learned to fly in a Tauber. No original flyable Taubers exist. The Technisches Museum Wien is supposed to have the only remaining Etrich built aircraft. It is also possible that it is the same type of Tauber flown by Sottotenente Gavotti. This ends my quick guide to the world's first bomber. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of the same, please like and subscribe.